Hello, in this lecture we will take a look at how to script and how to style for each specific page because since you load the page, you load the page into the container, you can't just put the script into that page and expect it to work perfectly, not to clash with everything else. You want to namespace everything first of all and then you also want to make everything readable so you don't want everything to be in one single file now obviously if you don't have a lot of javascript if, if you only have five variables and five functions you might be good to go with just your main tag but as you can see just with the loading it takes up quite a lot of space so it can be quite difficult to read and I would even recommend putting this navigation stuff to another JavaScript file as well. But again, whatever is on the main page can stay in the main page script tag. Okay, so what if you need something for say page one? Page one. Now, what we are going to do is very simply, we are going to create an input, an input, and then we will display the input in a paragraph. So let's delete all that, delete all that. And we will also do some styling there. So do it like that. Let's do paragraph, let's do input, input. And then we need another one, paragraph for the output. And then the button which triggers the whole thing. Okay, so we have three elements, very simple, very easy to understand. Okay, so let's do add, add, okay, that's it. Now, let's start with the styling. So what you want to do is you want to go to your root and you want to go to the CSS. And normally, if you have some different categories of your pages, I would suggest creating more folders. And you have a lot of stuff. If you have a lot of stuff for one page, I would suggest creating a folder for that one specific page. But since we don't have any of that in this case, we will just create the style sheet on this folder directly. Okay, so let's right click on that. Let's go to add new item, just like that. New item, web, and then where's the style sheet? Right here. Okay, we have a style sheet. So let's just do page, uh, lowercase, page one, style, just like that. And it's very easy to read, at least so far. Let's delete all that. So now we will want to make a class for the input and another class, let's say, for the button. Why not? For the button and for the input. So, first of all, let's create a little class for the button. And what we will do, since this is a button for the page one, for the page one, it's not a global button, we will do page one, btn, btn, just like that. So now what happens, you could have on the other style sheet, you could have page two btn, and say on the page one, the button might be might be fixed size and green and on the other on the other page it might be floating size floating width and it might be yellow or some other color so you get that choice for each page and the, the names do not conflict with each other okay so here we're gonna do on hover so let's do again page one btn and then do hover hover just like that. Okay, so we have that. And let's do some background color, something very simple and easy to see. Let's do, say, this one. Okay, we have the color and that's it. Now for the text box, we'll do the same exact thing. Let's do dot page one, page one, and then text box. So just like that, you namespace. You namespace because there's really no other way to do that properly. 
There are of course some ways to adjust for this whole thing. You can load, reload that stuff, but this way you just load everything on that main load when the user goes to your your site, your platform, and you load it up and you have access to all these classes and names and namespaces and IDs and all that. Now the same way we will do we will put them rather in in the page in the page one in this case and we will use the same technique for the naming of the elements so let's do class do class let's do page one as you can see I write page one and all the elements appear right away so that's gonna be text box page one text box and this one's gonna be class class and it's gonna be page page one btn just like that and again I could have page two btn for the page two buttons and all that so now the ID the ID we're going to do the same way again let's do ID and then page one page one test input test input just like that and I do ID again and I do page one btn btn Yes. Oh no, actually we don't need the ID on this one. We're, we're just gonna do the event on the actual element. And if you remember the first lecture, I said it's better to do the onClick event right here on the element rather than writing that in the JavaScript. And it's obviously only gonna be good for maybe two, three, four perhaps functions if you have more functions 10, 20, 30, then you should do that thing on JavaScript because it will be easier to read there. But if you only have one function, you just do the on click event right here. Okay, so now let's move on. Let's move on and let's move to the JavaScript. And in the JavaScript, we're going to do again in the root, in the JS. And again, I would suggest doing it the same way as we did the styling. And I don't believe we added, no, we didn't add anything in the text box. So let's do another background just to quickly see what's happening there. Okay, let's do yellow, the yellow. Okay, just like that. Close it. That's it. Now, the interesting part here is, of course, the JavaScript part and how we're going to namespace this part. So I'm going to create another JS file. I do JS file, new item, new item JavaScript file, just like that. And here I'm going to call it the page one script, page one script, just like that. Okay, so I have the file name, and obviously, file name doesn't do uh, any good at all. So, what we want to do we want to put everything in a variable a variable is sort of a namespace variable right we have namespace variable the page one and then script or oh, script just like that just like a page is called and i would suggest using these uh, namespace variables for each specific file and the name of a file should match the name of the variable right so we're gonna have a couple of things here we're gonna do test value test value another variable here test value is gonna be a little string so that's the value the value from our input right so we have test value and then we do document or rather function first of all we need to do so let's do test test function let's call it function just like that you write the function we don't need the name obviously and another separation and then lastly another function which will clear everything is the function like that double tab that's it we have it that so we have these functions and so on clear we will clear it up and here we will just put it in so you need to obviously write this now I'm writing this here but I'll explain why you should 
consider not doing it. So this test value, not test function I need, test value equals document element get element rather get element by id just like that and the id is going to be from the element there so we're going to take a look at that value that's it so i'm going to go here and get the id page one test input the id okay okay and so basically we assign from the text box to this variable right very simple very easy however i wrote this in this case because i'm sure it's gonna be this but you should be careful about it because if you're gonna make http call like we have here in the index right here so obviously on ready to stay change function that would not work it would be not found so if you have a lot of these i would suggest just using the full name so that would be like that page script instead of this okay so you write the full name and then you won't make any mistake anywhere it will be sort of safer a safe bet on this one okay so now let's do the output and i do not believe we have a name no we don't have a name we don't have the id rather D let's do and let's do page one and let's do test output test output just like that again i'm using the namespace page one just like that i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna i wanted to paste it but i don't have any way to paste it in so i'm gonna do again document get element by id and paste it right here and then in a text in a text in this case we don't want to see the html displayed we want to see the text now again i can write simply page script and i'll write let's say test value test value we need we need the test value just like that and now we need to clean everything up just like that you see how quickly i'm gonna do this I'm gonna do it like that okay I split it up and I put it to empty just like that or I could simply do it the other way that I could assign this could assign this first right and then I could assign this right here like that it should work perfectly both ways so you see this is a bit pointless obviously we could just assign a variable to or rather the text box content to the paragraph right away but obviously you would want to usually put it in a variable and then only display what is in that specific variable because you want to use the variable somewhere in the background in the background to make some calculations perhaps uh, retrieve some data from the server and all that okay so now all that's left to do all that's left to do is to put it in action and we actually need another button we need another button so let's copy this one let's paste it right here this one's gonna clear clear let's see clear clear clean doesn't really matter so now we need an action so again on click very simply and then let's do page the I can find it page one script page one script test function work perfectly and right here it's the same thing almost the same we need just different function so let's do page one and then clear clear so it will clear out the values now the most important thing we actually need to assign that javascript somewhere we need to download that js file and you must not forget it you must not forget it so we will create a little head here we'll create a little head just like that okay we have the head and we will do a little script in the head you can do it in the body as well 
uh, let's do as our C and our source page one script. Now always take a look at this stuff and also we haven't included the page style as well. So as you can see it's easy to forget and it's important not to forget. The rel style sheet style sheet href just like that very simply very basic all very basic and easy to do. Now let's launch it. Let's launch it and see what happens if it works out or not. I do believe we have the events set up. We have those events up and running. So again, the only thing you really need to watch for is the namespacing of things. You do need to use those specific namespaces. Now my browser opened right here. I'm going to put it in here. Okay, so we have it loaded right away. Let's try to click. Okay, we have that. See if our navigation works. Should be working perfectly. Now page two, remember we added a delay. And I'm gonna go back to page one. See if this works. Right, test and add. And as you can see, it adds perfectly. Now let's see if it clears. And it clears perfectly right away. Okay, so it's all quite easy to do. You just have to remember the namespacing of it all and obviously you have to remember to actually put those scripts into tags. So the script and the uh, link for the style sheet, those things are very important and often it will happen that you will forget to do that and you will see an error and you won't know why that happened. And with that we will conclude this lecture.